Well, I actually started in 1968, if you can believe that, when I was getting $10 a story to do UBC Thunderbird basketball game stories for the province. I'd send them in and uh, they would actually run them and they ran them with my name on it. But it's funny, once I was hired full time, I was recruited out of school, so I was hired full time in 1970. But it, when I was hired, it, I was three months before I got anything in my in the paper with my name on it, because they took my training seriously. They really, you know, wanted to make sure I knew things were done correctly. Don Brown was the sports editor, the late Don Brown, and he did a great job. I resented it at the time immensely. I thought he's been hard on me, but he absolutely we used to throw stuff back at me all the time, saying, "This doesn't have that in it. This is buried. You got the lead buried. Why are you doing it this way? You should. You could do it this way." And he taught me CP style, like kind of overnight. And then once you know CP style, and you can get everything in the story. Go from there. And that's the way, what he preached and that's what he taught. I came out of college, I was writing compound complex sentences from essays and that. Completely useless in the uh, newspaper business. Well, uh, then I was doing all the minor sports here in town. And then the uh, New Westminster Bruins, remember the Estevan Bruins came from Estevan to New Westminster and played in the Western League at Queen's Park Arena. So I got that beat. Uh, they, they thought I was ready, so I went on that beat. And it was a lot of very violent hockey, I thought. And I wrote about violence. The Bruins got mad at me and said, you can't write us, it's just standard hockey. And uh, it was like brawls every night. I mean, I remember one famous Lyndon Little paragraph, Little Lyndon Little paragraph saying, the teams split 14 minors last, or 14 majors last night. 14 majors? That's, I mean, imagine a, a, a hockey game now with 14 majors, all fighting penalties. So, yeah, I wrote that it was violent. I got, people got upset with me. And then the WHA Blazers came here, two years of pro hockey. So they finally thought, oh, this guy could be ready for the NHL. Tom Watt was having some problems. He was our hockey writer at the time having some issues, uh, personal issues, so they put me on it, and I never looked back. I uh, did the beat for a number of years and then was promoted to columnist, and then I left, went to the radio business in 1989, had my own radio show on CKWX, and it was uh, a cross-country network program. They tried to go from west to east, needless to say. That didn't work out terribly well, and... Uh, then I came back to the province in uh, 1991 and I had been there until uh, 2.15, again, writing mostly hockey columns. Retired. Susan and I both have our health. A little bit of money to uh, travel around in, although COVID's clipped our wings a little. Um, but we're hanging on and uh, enjoying this stage of our lives immensely and hope it doesn't end, although we know it will. <laughs> Do you do any writing at all? You mentioned a book. I am um, doing a book on the history of Vancouver College High School, my alma mater, kind of a labor of love. It's a good school, though. Had uh, it's had some tremendous graduates and uh, some. It does just tremendous work, and not just for wealthy people because it's in a wealthy part of town. It's. Uh, I mean, look at me. I was an East Side kid. My parents could sometimes barely afford the fees and. Uh, but they got me through and it served me very well. And I'm just kind of a, an example of the kind of people they've turned out. And uh, believe me, they've got graduates that have achieved 15, 30 times more than I've ever achieved. So it's a salute to do something like that. A couple of weeks ago, uh, Frank uh, Saravelli called me from the Players Association. It was I was quite stunned when he told me because I had... Uh, given up hope. I knew there were people trying to get me in that thought it was an injustice. And a lot of people, a lot of my colleagues thought I was in already and never thought about it. And then when they would find out that I wasn't in, they got upset and started to work. And more and more people I gather started to work on my behalf. And uh, so um, 
my understanding is that I won the election quite handily. So um, that was nice to get a to be a rousing. Uh, I think they realized that maybe they'd have made a mistake, but that might be an arrogant thing to say. It's uh, it's it's quite an honor, and but I think that they're doing a better job now. To be honest with you, I mean, early on there were some beauties put in. People had really very little business in it. And there's quite a few that we could agree on that shouldn't be in there, but uh, lately, in the last 10, 15, 20 years, it's been better, and it's just kind of been increasingly better as they've gone along. Not that I'm the pinnacle by any stretch, but that's what that indicates. But, um, you know, that they've just done a better job, more thorough job.